do you think that like that the church you know should have you know gay pastors that's what we'll say first can the church have a gay pastor um let me go I back have a question though yeah, yeah yeah go ahead um in your definition what is what what's the definition of a soulmate my husband <laughs> okay but that's, is a, that's that, a good is answer that, is, that some, is that someone that you intend on spending the rest of your days with until death correct okay okay well there are lots of um dis disabled people and retarded people out there so i just want to know where their soulmates are oh yes of course that's yeah. what's not fair oh, yes yeah. that that's something yeah <laughs> it sucks for them right yeah. <laughs> yeah see that that and that's where like i would definitely agree with him you know like there's definitely no such thing as soulmates because there's a lot of people that it's it, it's like being born in, in uh, india and then you become a hindu because you were born in india you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like are they never going to are they going to hell just because they were born in india yeah. you know like and yeah, I completely agree with him on that. I can one. definitely it say it's probably a wrong term to use. But, uh, <laughs> I believe in marriage and a yeah. husband one day. <laughs> That's good. Wait, uh, wait, are you married though? No. Okay. I'm not married. Okay. Um, yeah, I was really confused for a because I was like, didn't she say she was single? Oh, and yes. I was I'm like, single. I am but, single. But, but, but you definitely want to be married one day? Yeah. One okay. Day. Uh, <laughs> no, I got to ask you, bro, what do you think? Are most women hoes today? Or like, like, what do you think? I don't, I don't believe most women necessarily want to be hoes because that's very expensive to be a hoe. OK, mm. um, and it's a, there's it. also a lot of fear in doing that. But I will say that the women that do expose the most whorish tendencies are the ones that probably have the most religious background. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. So as a daughter of a Southern Baptist oh, preacher. No. Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Uh, there is some truth to that, I think, because we were put so much shame mm. on us. No, I hope my dad's not listening. Um. The church put a lot of shame on girls to not enjoy sex, to not be sexual, to not show any parts of your body. The guys could do whatever they want. Yeah. But if, if I dress a certain kind of way, it was almost I was inviting sin. And then we had the whole purity ring mm -hmm. scenario, mm -hmm. which I hate um, because it sets girls up for failure to be, OK, now I'm not pure. Now I'm not worthy of love because I accidentally, or I made a bad choice one night when I thought I loved somebody. So I think what that does is sits, and I can only speak from my own experience. Once I heal from some of that, I mean, we're really bad girls in the bedroom. Yeah. You know, it's just finding that man who can make us a Fabergé egg out of the bedroom. And then let me be a little bit of a whore in the bedroom, but just with my one dude. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No, and that's so. So if you actually look to Christianity correctly and like you read it all correctly and stuff, what 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 the Baptists were doing by like shaming it a lot is completely wrong. 100%. Like women are supposed to enjoy sex. Like you're supposed to enjoy sex with your husband. Like there's so much like misconceptions in the church. I hate like I hate going back to Christianity on this channel. I call myself a, a secular Christian channel because I fucking hate how the Christian church is today. It's and uh, I'm gonna be honest. It's super feminized. It's super feminist now, and they're literally setting up. Like the big, the thing that really triggers me the most, and, and I actually want to ask y'all about this, is that what they do is they'll have guys in there that are 30 years old, 35 years old, that have no sexual experience, might have been with one or two girls their whole life or something, just really big, nerdy, simpy type dudes, and they will hook them up with women that have three different baby daddies or have three kids already with another person or something like that. The church is all about... Let's take care of these women that have already done horrible things in their whole life and set them up with a guy who is a literal perfect, perfect little guy that's going to get fully taken advantage of and broken up with in five, ten years because she's never going to really love him. Mm -hmm. Love is so much deeper than, than than what everybody likes to think it is today. You, uh, certain, certain women going through certain things, you can't love certain guys afterwards. There's something called Alpha Widow that we talk about a lot on, a lot on the show because it happens all the time today with, with dating apps and social media and stuff. A woman will have sex with a certain level of guy or have certain experiences with a certain level of guy and then you expect to have that in any relationship for the rest of your life when that guy might have just been you know, an exception. He might have just been like uh, just using you for just sex. Like he's not the relationship type of guy. And there's not very sure or there's not that many relationship guys that are going to be able to give you those same levels of sex or experience like that one guy did. So they will be alpha widow. They're continually searching for this type of guy that's not there for them. They're never they're not real. Um, what were you going to say something? No, I no. couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I believe that the, con the the modern day church thrives off of the story in the Bible of the woman in the well. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's my that's favorite story, actually. It's so. your favorite story? Yeah. <laughs> I think church and religion in itself is very biased. And 
I don't agree with it for a while because I was that person that was raised in church as well. My family is super religious. I was made to go every Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday choir rehearsal. And it was like, can you ever get too much church? And the answer is yes. And they put <laughs> they put so much on you, especially the summer revival season. Yes, Good vacation Lord. Bible school. Can we not vacation in Bible school? <laughs> see, see, you know, you know what's so sad to me about this is like I've heard this story literally a thousand times of like people being forced into the church and what it does to them. And uh, so like my path was a lot different when I was 13 years old. I went into the church because I wanted to. It wasn't my family. My, 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 my family didn't go to church. And when I started going, I started going every day. I, I became homeschooled when I was 15. And I went there even more. I started staying up there all the time. I was one of the biggest people that served in the church. I, I was always working for treasures in heaven. And um, But it wasn't because of my family. It wasn't because anybody told me to do it. It was because I, I loved it. And that's just what I was. And the, and the problem today with the church and the problem today with religion is that people are forced into it. And when you're forced into it, especially taught by Baptists or taught, you know, by certain sects that aren't really looking out for, for the well-being of, or actually looking out for what Christianity really is, being what really Christ-like is, you know. And uh, it's sad because now you can sometimes be so damaged you'll never return back. Or maybe you'll never see it for the real truth because of that stupid shit that happened when you were young. And it's, it's, a, it's a sad thing. Like I, uh, and this is why I'm so, I call myself, you know, like the, like the secular Christian because when you label yourself as that, it's just like you're 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 accepting all types of horrible you know things with it. Whereas like I want to connect with everyone in the world, Hindus and Islam and everyone. And if I sit there and branch myself off, how am I going to be able to teach them? You know, like the true teachings of Jesus. You, yeah. Like you can't. And and they say multiple times in the Bible, like the church isn't a, a physical place. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the it, person. It's the body. So, yes. Yeah. I think yeah. there is a movement starting now where people are doing more home churches and leading with love and acceptance. I think we were raised led by fear. Yeah. Um. And so my prayer is the next generation leads with love and acceptance. Well, it's we, there's a fine. So we got to be careful, though, with that, because if we bring up like like, like the gay topics and stuff like that. Like we'll, we'll, we'll even ask this one around the table. Do you think that like that the church, you know, should have. You know, gay pastors. That's that's what we'll say first. Can the church have a gay pastor? Um, I'm just gonna say I was raised Catholic, and I went to church every Sunday, got on my knees, everything with my grandmother, um, and then I stopped going. And then recently, well, not recently, in the past five years, I got connected to Baptists, and um, I felt really connected. Um, then I moved churches because I wasn't connected so far and whatnot. I feel like. Me personally, I'm not going to get mad at you because you're gay and you want to be a pastor. As long as you're there for like the right reasons and you're, you know, worshiping the Lord, doing your service, and you know, not there for the wrong reasons like money or anything like that, then yeah, you can be gay and be a pastor. And if people follow you, that's even better. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. This is sticky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, because everybody's got to be really PC about it and not want to hurt other people's no, feelings. I, so I, I get it. I would say that... Um, this isn't very PC. I don't think that I would serve under someone actively living in that lifestyle. But you're not going to force somebody to not do it. I don't care. I'll it. still yeah. love you. And yeah. I'm happy for you to have that church. But I'm also not going to sit under someone who's morbidly obese or someone who has had a drinking problem or who's actively stepping outside of their marriage. And I know about it. Yeah. Mm. To me, it's all the same. And, and no pastor is perfect. But as long as they're actively seeking Jesus and not actively living in a sin lifestyle, then I can learn from them. And being a good example. Yeah. At the end of the day, just being a best, the best example possible of being what Christ like is. Yeah. Mm. What, what about you? What do you think? Well, like everyone said, I had a very religious background. You know, we used to, I had like a Nigerian religious background where, you know, we slept in the church. Even, yeah, even more hardcore, yeah. And stuff like that. Um, so I would say that a lot of times I see people are loving religion and not being spiritual. Spiritual mm. is what makes you connect with other people. And that the church is missing love, most of all, because we should love each other. No judgment. I think everybody talks about judgment. And then about the gay past it, I think that's going back to love. If, if if I'm sleeping around and I'm fornicating and I'm fornicating, then I'm sinning. So whose sin is worse? Mm. You know. Yeah. So would I be under a pastor who's fornicating and they having kids and stuff out of wedlock? No. Same thing. I wouldn't be under a gay pastor. Yeah. So same. Yeah. So what same. about you? I feel like that a message can come from anyone. Mm. Now, would I personally want to be? in a congregation under a gay pastor? 
I wouldn't. But at the same time, that's not to say that the pastor could not be gay. Because one thing we have to realize is that at the end of the day, ministers, pastors, deacons, they're all people. And we put them on this high pedestal that we shouldn't. And I learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. That at the end of the day, there are still people just like the situation right now that's going on with um, Diedrich Hatton and his wife. No, that's his wife dancing. That's exactly. Different. But they're saying, oh, well, she shouldn't be dancing like that's that different. on him. That's just like, that's it's like, different, I feel like. You, you can, they married. Yeah, they're married. But at the same time, you can't chastise a person for who they are or their lifestyle outside of church because don't put them on that high pedestal. Hmm. Okay. Well, the, so, so I would say like one of the things that the church is missing the most today is structure. And because there's no structure, um, this is why there's 14,000 different uh, sects of the, of, of it. There's this, why there's so many different beliefs. I think this, I think that like, there's just no structure. This is why Islam is actually doing really good right now and blowing up is because there's so much structure. There's so much, this is what we believe. This is the rules. And um, not, I, I think that like they're being gay pastors up is actually a big example of Christianity going so far, you know, of like, you gotta understand Jesus didn't say you can't judge people. He didn't, it's like, like if we go back and we look at the exact verse, he doesn't say you can't judge people. He just says, don't be hypocritical about your judgments. The Pope was gay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I hate to so say I, it, but we know I, it was messing I, with I, little boys yeah, just because well, we didn't know. I don't support Same Catholicism, thing, no offense. But it's <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly think Catholicism <laughs> is like, Six six six. I mean, everybody knows. Like I said, that. I just yeah. grew up with it. Or not, everybody knows historically popes. Yeah. Sleep. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, so so I I feel like the devil has been attacking the church since it was since since the book was written in Constantinople. That bitch has been getting attacked. Okay, and like so, all the popes, like like like, like Catholicism, all this stuff, it's all been attacked by the devil. Like the shit. There's always gonna be a, a opposite of the light. There's always going to be a dark to the light. If the light gets really big, the dark going to get just as fucking big. If Catholicism gets fucking massive, so is like the actual light of Christianity is going to get massive as well. Like that's just that's just the way that I see it. Hey y'all, Sergio here. I just want to mention I've created a completely free guide that shows you exactly how I went from having low confidence and being painfully awkward around women to easily meeting and dating numerous high quality desirable women in real life without the use of any dating apps or social media. So if you're struggling to get out there, if you have approach anxiety or don't know what to say or how to interact with women to make them want you and are sick of using dating apps with low value girls that hundreds of other guys have been chatting with, click the link in the description below to grab your free guide right now. And if you want private mentorship with me personally to help guide you every step of the way in this process, check out my mentorship program in the description too. I would be happy to help you reach your dating goals and overcome any obstacle you may face. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. I hope to see you soon. Peace out.